Welcome to the Winchester News Online. I'm Kalani Gaswal, and here are the headlines. Hats off! It's graduation day for the University of Winchester. I think there's too many restaurants taking over retail spaces. Shops are disappearing in Winchester. Is the high street surviving? And it's a steamy affair for a very special locomotive. It's that time of year again, one of the most important weeks for the graduates of Winchester as they leave the cathedral with their degrees in hand. Our reporter, Rebecca Addison, is there. Graduation, the final rung on the ladder of education. Today marked the beginning of graduation season as the first class of 2017 held their ceremony in Winchester Cathedral. Chancellors, lecturers and distinguished guests alike gathered to bid farewell to the newly graduated. Emotions ran high as Chancellor Alan Titchmarsh gave a speech about the graduates' promising future. As Winchester graduation season begins, the graduates take a step into the next chapter of their lives. Rebecca Addison, Winchester News Online. If you're a regular shopper in Winchester, you might have noticed some changes to some of your favourite shops. Recently, Winchester has lost several long-standing businesses. We sent out Harry Acton to find out what is happening. Winchester High Street is the heart of the city, home to some of Winchester's best shops. But recently you may have noticed empty shop fronts down the high street, with signs like this all too common in the city. I went to find out why this was happening and what local residents and local businesses thought of the change. Yeah, I'm aware that the rent was a factor in LK Bennett moving out of Winchester. Mm -hmm. um, Beals, is, well, the rental was a factor of that as well. Like Starbucks, Costa, WH Smith. Or like, and McDonald's are probably the biggest, you know. I think there's too many restaurants taking over retail spaces. But I think there are also quite a few big chains that have um, closed down recently or moved out of the city. But what's moved in are a lot more restaurants and cafes and bars. Um, and most of those are chains or small chains, which is a bit disappointing. The uh, council in Winchester... Uh, says it's supporting small businesses and there's a number of ways in which they are and they um, are cash strapped themselves and they don't give financial support to the industry in the way that other towns do. We enjoy what we can from them and we regret what we don't get from them. In a statement issued to Winnell, the council said it is committed to helping retailers move into vacant sites in the city and offers support to independents and smaller chains to ensure they become successfully established here. It is perfectly acceptable for a vacant site to change usage, and the council considers all planning applications on their merits. The fact of the matter is, there are empty units on Winchester High Street right now, but there are plans to fill these. If you continue to use your high street, the shops will still be there. Harry Acton, Winchester News Online. Ordering food from high street restaurants to your door has become so popular in Winchester, it's seen a surge in jobs. The delivery service Deliveroo in Winchester is looking to add 30 new riders to the payroll over the next few months. This is because orders have risen by 1,200%. Deliveroo riders use bikes for their deliveries. The number of riders in Winchester has already more than doubled in the last year. People in Hampshire are facing cuts to care services. This follows a county council meeting to discuss plans to reduce spending. 
Joining me now is our political correspondent, Garen Wilcock, to tell us more. So, Garen, what exactly is the council planning to do? Yes, well, Hampshire, uh, Hampshire County Council met yesterday to discuss a new proposed budget plan, which they're hoping will save them an estimated £140 million between now and April 2019. While the council plans on saving this money through cuts across several different departments, the department most under threat is adult social and health care, which is currently at the risk of losing over £50 million of funding between now and 2019. What happens next? While we don't have the full details yet, as the current proposition is still being discussed and debated amongst the council, we expect for the full final announcement to be made on the 2nd of November this year. Until then, it should be noted that the current plan is being met with fierce criticism from members within the council, with one Lib Dem councillor going as far as to tell us he has no doubt that only suffering will be caused by these cuts. <coughs> Thank you, Garen. Students don't often have the time to do things they enjoy, from nights out to working out. How can students find the balance? Our lifestyle reporter, Adriana Jade Webb, reports. Here in Winchester, the lives can be pretty busy. To maintain well-being, it can be necessary to learn how to balance one's lifestyle. I normally just wake up, go to uni, be, be in the library until like three-ish, then I go to the gym, and then I'm with my friends after that. So if I've got loads of essays and stuff to do, I won't come to the gym. I haven't been to the gym for a week. So even if I miss a week from the gym, I'm not on the board that's that I need to go. And I also work as well to have money for rent, so it's kind of hard balancing it all at the same time. Finding the perfect balance as a student can be quite difficult. With the pressures and demands of university and our social lives, this may seem impossible. One man here in Winchester believes he's found the answer. One of the key things for me is people finding a lifestyle balance. If you don't do it, over time general health suffers, you know, you, you don't feel as active, you don't feel as sharp. Our modern lives enable us to have lots of things that bring us immediate joy. Tasty food, wild nights out, they bring immediate joy, but what about the balance? I, I got a phrase, you know, if you want to really enjoy a night at the Oscars, not every night can be a, day, a, a, a night out in Hollywood. You have to put the work in. So if you want to look really great at the show, there, there comes a time where you have to, to work hard. And I think it's, it's avoiding uh, or being aware that all around us is things that we go, OK, it's Saturday night, I'm going out for a special event, that's fine, but I draw the line and get a balance back. It's clear that being a student can put pressure on you, but it is key to have that balance within your life to live a healthy, happy lifestyle. I'm Adriana Jade Webb, Winchester News Online. On the topic of keeping fit, now we go to Mike with sports. Well, the main sport this weekend was ice hockey. On Saturday night, we saw the Basin State Bison play against Stratton Red, um, Red Hawks. Um, it's quite a tight game. The game started quickly, with Basin Stoke taking control and dominating the early chances. About midway through the first period saw the herd take the lead through Ivan Antonov's close-in snapshot. Bison continued to press through the period and increased their lead to four goals to nil. With goals coming from a redirected effort from the University of Winchester's Thomas Karpov and Bison's new import, Roman Malenik, while short-handed due to a smart turnover of play. However, Stretton pulled back two in the second period. Their second coming from a penalty shot after Malenik impeded a Red Hawks attacker.
The goal was converted by Joe Allen. But with about six minutes to go, Bison grabbed another through Captain Aaron Connolly's wrist shot. This saw the game finish five goals to two. The Herd faced Cardiff in their next home game on the 28th of October. And now, just before I go, a huge congratulations to golfer Mike Sandbrook, who won himself a new Mercedes with a hole-in-one at the Captain's Day event at the South Winchester Golf Club. Big congratulations to him. And now back to you, Kalani. Thank you, Mike. Have you ever wanted to own a piece of Winchester? Well, now you can with Winchester's own version of Monopoly. We sent Matilda to pass go and collect £200. Monopoly has come to Winchester. People can buy their favourite places from the River Itchen to Winchester Royal Theatre. I hit the streets to find out what people thought of this soon-to-be family favourite. I think it's fantastic. I think it's really, yeah, I don't know how many other towns have got one like this. I headed over to talk to the manager of the tourist centre to see how the game's been doing. Uh, the Winchester Monopoly's been really popular. We've had a lot of local people coming in and buying it um, ever since it's launched on Thursday last week. So yeah, really popular. Cool. Prospective property owners can grab the King Alfred statue for a bargain price of £60, the City Museum for £100, and breaking the bank at £400, the historic Winchester Cathedral. And before we go, a story to take you back in time. Hampshire's Heritage Railway is restoring its flagship steam train. We'll be getting a look behind the scenes of the project. But first, a trip to Rockley Station, with just one of many stops for the Watercrest track. Stepping onto an historic steam train is a journey into the past. The Watercrest line gets thousands of visitors every year, while 450 volunteers keep it moving full steam ahead. The railway is now working on restoring their flagship locomotive. The Canadian Pacific train was used during World War II and has just reached an important milestone as its frame was lifted onto its wheels. The project brings volunteers in with stories and love for the steam trains, but has also given retirees a new purpose. We're collecting stories about people who can remember the great age of steam, who may have driven this engine. We even have the story of one of the firemen who was on board this engine uh, when it did its 105 mile an hour journey, where that record breaking run it did that now exists. And he says in his oral history, I got on board and I was just told to shovel coal. I didn't realize what I was gonna be part of. And it's that amazing story that exists because of this engine. We've actually got a volunteer, his mum used to work in the machine shop in the Second World War, building parts for this engine, and he now restores the engine she worked on, which is a lovely kind of story to tell. And so we're very proud that female engineers, in essence, have been involved in the original building of our engine, and we can show what they're very capable of. So it's not just an engine, it's really about her entire life and what she affected. Here at Eastleigh Works where the Canadian Pacific is being restored as you can see behind me. The frame has just been lifted onto the wheels but there's plenty more to do. Most of it is being done by volunteers and they're hoping it'll be restored by 2019. I think steam engines are, are, are alive, you know, they for me, it's the smell. You know, you, you see a steam engine go through a platform and that smell just lingers once it's gone. And it's just the noise. Uh, we lived close to Southampton Central Station and I was one of the small boys with a grubby notebook on the platform and for hours and hours and hours or beside the track down at Millbrook watching these things with sort of 13, 14 coaches on trying to take off and trying not to slip as they went. They're just impressive, they just, you know, they get into your system. 
but there is still plenty to do. In order to be on track for success, the Watercrest line needs to raise another £200,000. This is Emily Nee, Winchester News Online. That's all for today's programme. Thank you for watching Winchester News Online.